Alright. Are we ready to get this thing started? I think so. Some unfortunate news. What in the world? I have a long name. I accidentally deleted the last dynasty we watched. We were, I've been working on. I was leaving files on the PlayStation. And, uh, yeah, it didn't go over quite so well, messed around, deleted the entire thing. So now, hold on, where is, turned into be a frustrating situation. Now I can't find <laughs> Yo, my dynasty's not up here. Man, I had completely recreated the whole thing and it's gone. Everything on Heisman. Um, we'll go six minutes. Game rules, everything will keep up. I feel like they never really call any penalties. Um, I'm gonna we'll throw pass interference up to sixty. Throw face mask up to 60, holding up to 60. I guess that'd be it. We'll do false starts up to 55. That might give it more of a realistic feel, maybe. We'll see how that goes. I'll adjust it. I'm not going to touch any of the sliders. I'm not going to touch any of that. All right, we're good to go there. This is actually very frustrating. Again, it's all good. Y'all can watch me rebuild. Watch, hold on. I'll go 
watch me rebuild this dynasty. I'm not going to do any teams. Custom conferences. Let's get the conferences squared away. Um, put Maryland in the big. And Louisville. There you go. ACC is good. American Conference. We're going to put Rutgers in the big. Now we got to add a couple. Let's see. So I know most of these Conference USA teams. So East Carolina. Um. Tulsa. What? Tulane. All right. Then I think Navy. Might be a long episode, man. This is uh, yeah. Sorry. So we're gonna go east and west. East. West. Start conference game. Doesn't really matter to me. Go week three, I guess. Connecticut is no longer in the American, if I'm not mistaken. So we might need to look into replacing Connecticut. But we'll keep them in there for this. East, so we'll switch out Houston to Temple. Tulane for UCF, Memphis for USF. There you go. There's your East and your West, American Conference, the Big 12. Should be good. The Big Ten. I think that's accurate. We gotta change this to East and West as well. They don't do that dumb leaders legends division. East. West. Sure that's the only swap I needed to make, but let me double check that. I think I think that's accurate. Big T conference. Yep, the West got Purdue, Northwestern, Nebraska, Illinois, Minnesota. Minnesota, Illinois, Nebraska, Virginia. Yep, okay, we're good. We're good in the Big Ten. This Conference USA. So we're going to add Army to Conference USA. We're going to add. What does that do for Conference USA? Okay, so we're good there. We're gonna add these independents. BYU is going to the Mountain West, like they used to be, and we'll put them in the Mountain. Idaho West, New Mexico State's going to the Sun Belt. So I fill that conference out, and we'll keep these two guys. That should be it. Hold on, let me go back. Let me double check. 
Turn on the conferences, all right. I might add right now. I might add Old Dominion to the Mac. Yeah, let's do that. Add Old Dominion to the Mac. So now they're filled out. Bam. Mountain West is filled out. I'm actually thinking about this. This is why I'm taking so long here. I think about throwing Notre Dame in the Big Ten and putting Nebraska back in the Big 12. I kind of want to do that just for the hell of it. I kind of don't want any independence. I know Nebraska has been historically an independent. I kind of don't want to do that right now. I kind of want to put Notre Dame in the Big Ten, even though we know in real life they're more closely tied to the ACC. I think ACC is good, it's, it's pretty good for right now. Uh, I don't know, what y'all think? Got a few people in here watching, I don't know, man. I kinda wanna throw Nebraska back in the Big 12. I feel like the Big 12 is lacking compared to the other power fives. I kind of want to throw Nebraska in back in the Big 12 to at least give it, what would that make it, 11, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, 11. And then throw Notre Dame in the Big 10. And then you can go, you know, get why not? Why not? It's my dynasty. Let's do it. We're going to throw Nebraska in the Big 12. And I'm going to add, I don't, no independence. We're going to add Notre Dame. What? Yeah, but you don't need independence. So they won't, so there has to be an independent? I think that's stupid. Okay, so we can't do it. I'll throw Nebraska back in the Big Ten. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. BCS Bulls. All right, let's go. That was a waste of time. So, if you don't know, I accidentally deleted our other dynasty. The good news is, I updated the rosters. Um, no Kayla LeBourne on this roster. No Manny Rogers on this roster. No uh, Cornell Jones on this roster. You're going to see. The roster is going to look more like Florida's, Florida State's actual going into 2020-2021 roster. So... So before we hop in this recruiting, because that's where it's going to take my time as we add some recruits to the board to, to try to go after. First, let's take a look. Let's go to schedules. Let's do the schedule. Obviously, because this is 2014, we have to start with Pitt. Fairly tough schedule to start with. Here's what we're going to do. 
Obviously, I'm not playing them. Let's see. We're going to open this one up. Go to week two. We're going Boise at Boise. And then this Maryland game, we'll see is West Virginia available. If West Virginia's not available, we're going to Texas. I don't like West Virginia's available, though. Texas A&M would be a cool little game. Um, let's see. Two games by week, two games. So I kind of like having this by week before Clemson, for sure. What if I just have two bye weeks and go over West Virginia here? Perfect. We're actually going to make this one a hold on, let's see if we can find it. We're going to make this the Chick-fil-A kickoff. There you go. We opened up the season with Pitt. Boise, West Virginia, Louisville, Boston College, two bye weeks, and then we go into the home stretch of Clemson. We close out the season strong. Somehow Syracuse is ranked, but whatever. And we got North Carolina. All right, there's your schedule. Would you like? Yes, I would like to keep them. Dun, 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 dun. Depth chart. Show y'all these rosters. Actually, here's what we'll do. We'll go to the red shirt and show you the entirety of the roster. I feel like that's a better. I think that's a better way to show that one. So, let's red shirt some of these players. Get a red shirt, but Rotomaker surely will. As you can see, there's our quarterback room James Blackman, 80 overall, Jordan Travis, Chubba Purdy, Tate Rotomaker. Halfbacks, as you see, no more Taylor LeBorn. We got Webb, Corbin, Douglas, Wren, and Tor Feely. I'm going to redshirt Toro Philly. We'll go four deep in the running back room. Toro Philly will get the red shirt. But we got a lot of speed, as you can see in this backfield. We'll find ways to get Douglas and Ren the ball. Yeah. Wide receiver room, led by Tamarion Terry, Keyshawn Hell, and DJ Matthews, Warren Thompson, freshman Brian Robinson, Jordan Young, and Darian Williamson. I was debating between him or Poirier. I went with him. Tennessee product, 6'3", 180. We're going to throw a red shirt on him. He'll be a future playmaker for us. There's our tight end room. We've got the, the transfer out of UCLA. McDonald, Rector, and Boatwright. We're going to throw that on Boatwright. There's your left tackles. As you can see, we're not very good on the offensive line. We're going to throw a red shirt on Robert Scott. There's Lucas. We're going to throw a red shirt on Zane Herring. Schrader gets a red shirt. There's your other guard spot with Love Taylor. FIU transfer. Might play him at tackle, might keep him at guard, don't know yet. And then Brian Scott. We're going to throw that on Willis. Defensively, Griffiths is going to get a red shirt. Uh, nobody's going to get a red shirt on this, on this defensive tackle spot. We got Lundy, Loach, and McCray. I might, I'm going to throw Richard on Jalil McCray. Let's 
Steven Dix. I throw a red shirt on him. And let some of these guys. Because we got, I think we got enough backers. Yeah, we'll throw a red shirt on Dix. We'll throw a red shirt on Ronaldo Green. There you see Jerry and Jones. He's another new addition. It wasn't on the last roster. And uh, Green McKnight will get the red shirt there. And then Gant will get the red shirt here. So we red shirt a lot of people, but that's because we're building for the future. There's your... Let's hit up the depth chart. Mm, who is going to start for the Seminoles? Jordan Travis, James Blackman, or Chubba Purdy? We'll do the quarterback room last. Corbin, Douglas, and Wren. I'm good with that. I'm good with that right there. Wide receiver room. Hmm. I'm fairly I'm fairly good with this one as well. Don't think I need to make any changes here. Hold on. Yeah, I think I'm going with Cam McDonald as a starter. Um, we'll give we'll do that. Washington's gonna get the start. Okay, apparently he's somewhere else on the team. Let's see what we got. Lucas, yes. I'm gonna put Brady Scott at right tackle. I'm going to throw. Hold on. Brady Scott at right tackle, Taylor at guard, Maselli at center, Lucas at other guard, and Darius Washington at the other tackle spot. J. Rob. I think I'm going to put. Yeah, that's fine.
Alright, there you got it. What's going on, Frank? Man, yeah, you missed. I messed around and deleted, man, my last, uh, the last season we had. So I had to come back and we redoing the whole season. We starting from scratch. New roster. New everything. So right now we're just setting the depth chart. Looks good. We've already set the schedule. All we got left now was the recruiting board. So, to speed this particular season along, I am not going to create any recruits. I'm just going to go straight to recruitment. The computer's going to generate all the recruits. I'm about, I'm about to get in here and get it cracking. Let's see who's still in Florida State and who's not. Yeah, Frank, it sucks. I messed around. I was trying to clear out some space on the PlayStation, deleted it on accident. So here we are, starting an entirely new dynasty. It's still Mike Norvell. We have a more up-to-date roster, but it's all good. Let's check out this Spark 100. Let's see who are the top players. The top overall player in the nation, Mr. Jesse Fields, is interested in Florida State, so we are going to throw him on the board. He's an athlete. Out of Alabama. Let's start with the quarterbacks. These are your top three quarterbacks in the nation. None of them are feeling for state. We got one out of Florida. Running backs. Brian Wallace out of Tennessee. Got us number one. Gonna throw him on the board. Probably really don't need to recruit any running backs, but I'll take look, I'll take the number two overall running back in the nation. So not going to recruit the running back room too hard, but we'll definitely throw him on the, on the board. Um, wide receiver, Mike Williams out of Kentucky. Let's go, five-star. Who else we got? Anybody else interested? We got a couple four-stars. Sean Sowell and Jason Hodge out of South Carolina, one out of Oregon. We will throw them on the board. We, we, we got to recruit these receivers. Three wide receivers. I think that's a pretty... This guy runs a 4-4. Four four. So, here we go. Tight ends. No tight ends. Got, got to get offensive linemen. Of course, none of the top old linemen are looking at us, but we got to go after some old linemen. Look at it. No guards. No centers. DNs. 5'11", 260, he's kind of small, but he's out of Florida. We'll go with Jason Smith. We'll go with Will Rogers. And I'll add Brandon Johnson to the mix out of Arkansas. No D tackles. Got one outside linebacker out of Florida, Mr. Brad George. All right. Wow, no corners. That's interesting. All right, let's check out the rest of these athletes. Got Fields, Marcelo Jones out of Georgia, Todd Harris, Michael Green, Jim Williams, and Tyler Everett. So those are your 14 top 100 players we're recruiting. Now, hold on, go back. Now I'm going to check out anybody that's interested in Florida State. Let's check out the top players. Did see the schedule day FSU had. I'm okay with it. If you're down in tally, it would be different. Did see the schedule day FSU had. I'm okay if you're down in tally, it would be different. Are you talking about the, the recent ACC schedule they just released? 
I noticed that too. I, I think, uh, you know, they put out the dates and the teams. I, you know, I think it's a solid schedule for the most part. All right, so we got a couple quarterbacks. Probably don't need to recruit quarterbacks too heavy. We'll go after Kyle Sitzer. And like I said before, I don't really think I need to go after too many running backs. Uh, I think we're good on a receiver tip. I might go after this one just because he's got us number one. It's probably a guy we want to take advantage of. Four four six. We got one that's four four two at a. I like his size. Four four two at a six five two zero three. And let's go after this one. And we might come back. We might come back for him. This one's a 438 and a Pompano. Mm. Let's, let, let me fill out the rest of my board before I overstock these uh, damn wide receivers. Got a couple good tight ends on the roster. There we go. Get, some, get a couple tight ends. Now we got to get these. Okay, got a four star tackle. Number six overall tackle. Yeah, we got to get you. And we're going to we go up to three stars too. We're going to fill this offensive line room up. Oh, yeah. The end, I think we're solid on. These top, yeah, there we go. Get the top three defensive tackles on our board. Mm. Definitely need some corners to work with. Yeah, see, my, my, my board's already filling out fast. I got two spots left. So I'm definitely going to take this four-star. I got one spot left. I feel like we're stacked at safety, and I don't need to recruit safety. I'm going after a ton of athletes. Now I'm gonna go after that one wide right receiver again. Bump it. I want this 3 8 one. I want you. What's going on, Tyler, man? I'm just chilling, you know, playing the game. Had to restart the whole dynasty mode, so here we are. Frank says, I mean, if you're down in Tally, you would probably feel a little different about ACC FSU schedule. I don't know. I don't know. Why, why do you think I would feel different if I was down in Tallahassee? I mean, it's not like people are going to be going to the games like that anyway. So, you know, I don't, I don't really think, like, I think this is going to be like one of those years, man. Home field advantage, I just don't really see mattering that much this year, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know, so, I just I don't know. I think um, they interview uh, the the players start their full practice next tomorrow. We had some interviews with coaches and players today that came out pretty good, man. Uh, I thought they were pretty insightful. I thought Coach Fuller's uh, Coach Fuller's interview was very insightful of the way they want to use guys and the way he wants to use Amari Gainer. It was very insightful in the terminology he used. So I know like it's a, a, a Florida State like officially runs or is going to be running like a four, excuse me, yeah, a four, two, five. But when you hear the terminology of stud and fox, which are two completely separate positions, I would almost make an argument that FSU is going to be running something more akin to like a three, three, five. Or even like a three two six, if that makes sense. Like what I'm trying to say. If if what I'm saying makes any sense, like the way they're talking about it, the stud in the fox. So the and I, I know Tyler's pretty good on this. You correct me if I'm wrong, Tyler. So the stud 
is a linebacker safety hybrid where they're going to put Gainer. The Fox is more of a outside linebacker slash DN role where the D, the end might be standing up or have his hand in the dirt at any moment, which basically, you know, I think they're going to be interchanging some of those positions a lot. That's almost like a three. It's like a three, three, five. Almost. And imagine if you put like Woodbay in there at, 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 at some snaps or a Nazaldeen at some snaps at that stud position. Now you're talking, like I said, a, a four, one, six or like a three, two, six. Like it's kind of crazy. It's very, very versatile. Um, it's kind of what I got out of Fuller's uh, little, little press conference. I thought it was very insightful. Um, they talked about the wide receivers, excuse me, the quarterbacks. And of course, they didn't talk too much. They weren't going to give too much on that competition. Um, that's going to have to be played out over the next couple weeks. So don't expect them, don't expect the coaching staff to keep that quarterback competition close to the vest. Can't even necessarily say I blame them. Um, Tyler says, Stud is a linebacker safety who can also pass for us. Kind of like a jack of all trades. Yeah, but they also have this thing called the Fox position, which is why I think it's extremely interesting to see how they're going to implement. They have a lot of different terminologies. But the, line, but the Stud is basically a linebacker slash safety, but the Fox is like a DN slash linebacker. So they have like two different interchangeable positions on the, on the defense. So they can use so many guys in so many different places. It's going to be very interesting. All right, so we got this recruitment out the way. Um, but again, I thought it was some pretty good interviews, man. I thought it was some good insight. Some good insight uh, of how Florida State's handling things as far as uh, safety goes, the thought process of the coaching staff, uh, they had Marv and Jay Sean Corbin gave some interviews today. I think Marv is a. Uh, I think Marv represents himself extremely well every time he gets in front of the camera. Um, so, Marv came out and said he didn't come to Florida State for his final year to to opt out. He's all in. That's good news to hear if you're a Florida State fan. And at the same time, Miami's top defensive end. He decided to opt out, get ready for the draft. I'm not saying it's a good. I'm not saying he's a. That's a good decision or a bad decision. It's an interesting one. Uh, for some of these kids to opt out or stay, but Marv said he's all in. So good stuff to hear if you're a Florida State fan, right there. Tyler says he, Adam Fuller is super intelligent and detail oriented. Yeah. I thought Adam, Adam Fuller, uh, as far as coaching, coaches-wise, I thought uh, his was the most insightful um, in terms of how he's going to coach, in my opinion. I thought his was the most insightful interview. Um, Dillingham and Norvell are almost one and the same type of person, so... I don't think you're going to get much out of those guys. I think they're going to keep that offensive close to the vest. I would have liked to hear Atkins and, and, and get his thought process on the uh, offensive line. Um, and then they, uh, Papa Chewis, I don't know if I'm saying that name right, but they also interviewed him, the DN slash special teams coach. Which he gave an interesting little tidbit on talking about who he's got back there for punt returns and stuff. Uh, I think DJ Matthews was the one name. He was the one person he named by name. But he says he has like a six-man rotation on punt return, like an eight-man rotation on kick kickoff return. So... I expect DJ to be one of the guys back there, but I also expect us to see some of those uh, young running backs to get some opportunities out there as well. Get this damn 
recruiting going. Gotta get Brian Wallace on board. First year recruitment is going to be tough. I can feel it. Because we got a lot of key positions that we got to hit on. And quite frankly, I probably don't want to waste too many points here in these receivers. Because that's not a position that I'm really hurting on. Start low and go higher if we need to. This is where I really want to pour all my damn points into here. These old linemen, man. to do is I know he's a five star but I'm, I'm uh, we are loaded at running back I will take him if he commits but I'm I'm not gonna pour a bunch of points into him I'm not gonna pour a bunch of points into Brian Wallace I'm gonna take some of those and I'm gonna really try to invest in this offensive line So unfortunately, Tyler, I deleted the old one, so I had to start a new one. I was trying to clear out some some, some uh, file space, and I could have sworn I clicked on the one thing, and somehow it deleted the other thing. So, yeah, I messed up. So the only good news about that is uh, I was able to... Do a more up-to-date roster. So I Layborn is not on this roster that you're seeing, that you're going to see this season. No Layborn. I added Jerry and Jones. Um, who else? I added some other guys, too. I added one of the freshman receivers. So like We're getting tied on points, man, and I ain't even touch defense yet. Oh, we got a thousand points left. We got to make them count. I got to try to spread these points out. Might have to hold off on offering scholarships. Make sure everybody gets some points. And go back. Joshua, what's going on, man? Man, let me tell you, this game... If you're trying to buy this game now, if you don't have this game and you're trying to buy it now, good luck. People are overpricing this game. You're absolutely right. This game goes for like two, three hundred dollars. You're lucky if you can get it cheaper. If they ever do a new NCAA, Tyler, I would hope it's as long as it's better than Madden. I hate that. I hate Madden French. I hate Madden. I hate Madden. And I'm running out of points, man. I gotta hit. Let me hit one of these athletes here. Oh my god. Oh man. See, look at that. I ran out of points. I gotta see. Let's see. Where are we wasting some points that we don't need to waste? Okay, we're gonna take you down to 200. Probably here is where my biggest waste of points is going. Is this receivers? 
I probably don't even need to be targeting these many receivers. They just had some speed that I didn't want to pass up. Joshua says if he had it, he would have sold it. So I don't actually have a physical copy of the game. I actually, when this game first came out, it was like the first game I ever digitally downloaded. So I was lucky. When I started playing this again, I didn't have to look for it or hope that the game was scratched or some shit. I had the game digitally downloaded. So I just pulled it up and started playing So even if I wanted to sell it, I couldn't because it's, it's digitally on my console. I can't sell it. All right, I think we're good. I think we're good um, on the recruiting trail. We're about to hit up this. We're about to get into this first game as we revamp the Mike Norvell era. We got Pitt game one. Let's take a look at... Some of the top stuff going on in the NCAA. Look at that. First game of the season, AM in Texas. Let's take a look at these preseason polls. Let's see who's where, who's what. Turn says Greg Rousseau. Yeah, he opted out. I can't say I blame him. Whether or not it's a good decision or not, that's on him. Um, he's going to be a high draft pick regardless. Here's your top three. Clemson, Bama, Georgia, followed by Oklahoma, Ohio State, LSU. As we continue to go down, as you see, Florida State is not ranked. Miami comes in at 27. They got West, they got Army ranked higher than us. Here we are at 38. How the hell is Army at 30? Man, come on. All right. There's your preseason polls. Take a look at the Heisman watch. T2Y mad. Not good for Miami. Uh, I'm not going to really worry about that. Uh, if I'm Miami, I wouldn't even worry about that. I mean, yeah, you're losing the difference maker. Um... Miami also got the guy from Temple to transfer. He's also one of the top defensive ends in the country. They had a fairly good freshman last year. They got that transfer from uh, UCLA, I believe, who was a five-star. Man, Miami's got talent at the defensive end position. Are you losing a difference maker? Yeah, you are, but they'll be all right. Honestly, I don't think it's a bigger deal as people are making it. I'm sorry, I should, probably should be trolling them harder, but just being real. All right, let's get this game started. Let's play this pit game. You can see our offense is only at 83. Oh, wait a minute. Before we play the pit game, that's what I didn't do. Who is the starter? Who should be the starter? Jordan Travis, Jane Black, or should I just go with the true freshman out the out the gate? I feel like from a development standpoint, I should just go with Purdy out the gate. If you look at let's see, throwing power, Purdy's got the best arm. He's got the worst accuracy of these guys, though. I just feel like I should just like last season, I just was going with Purdy, so. Yeah, we're going with Purdy. Oh, no. 
I messed up. Hold up. We beat Miami either way. Jeff Cameron said he was the reason Miami would beat us. Their depth on DN won't be good. They still have depth on DN, so I know Jeff Cameron can say what he want, but I could sit here and bring up their depth on DN right now. So, matter of fact, let me show you, because, again, to me, it's not a big deal. I know this is a video game, right, but these, these rosters are based on real life. If you go to Miami's defensive ends, you still got this guy right here, Jalen Phillips. I know Rousseau's gone, or he's opting for the draft or whatever. You still got Phillips. You're still going to have Roche. And the one guy on here that's not showing is... Uh, well, Phillips is the guy that, that the, he's the transfer from UCLA who was a five-star. And you're still going to have, you know, Roche or Roche, I think it's Quince, I think it's Roche. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I just, I think they'll be all right. We was going to, I'm with Tyler. We was going to beat him either way. I don't, I don't care enough about Miami to care whether their, their defensive end rotation is good. But Russo was a very, uh, he was definitely the best player on that defense, though. That's for sure. He's probably a top, he's probably a top 10 pick. If I had, I would, I would probably say he's a top 10 pick. Definitely a difference maker. So is it good for Miami? No. Is it going to kill him? Manny Diaz is going to kill them before uh, losing any player kills him. I guarantee you that. Manny Diaz can't coach. So that's what's going to kill him. Let's start this first game. Right, I'd be more worried about their offense than their defense. Just my opinion. They better hope King can, can win them some games. Black men not being interviewed today is telling. Well, no quarterback got interviewed, but you make a good point, Tyler. There, probably no other school... That has a you know red shirt junior quarterback, they pro they they probably would have threw him out right to be interviewed. So you make a good point right there. Even though FSU didn't throw any quarterback out there right now, if Purdy had went out there and interviewed, that would have told the entire story. Having no quarterback out there at all is interesting. Uh, they've been very adamant that it is a wide open competition at that spot. So usually you probably would put your you know your upper class quarterback out there. So like I thought I did think having Jay Sean Corbin was interesting and not having a guy like Tamari on Terry out there or something. So I did think having Jay Sean Corbin out there was pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, I kind of agree with that. Um, I, that's the guy who I thought we'd hear from offensively was Terry's kind of been pinned as the offensive leader and we know Marv is the defensive guy, um, but not having Blackman out there is interesting, and having Corbin as a, of all players, having Jay Sean Corbin I thought was also very interesting. Let's see what else we got here. A top two DN? No, we just gonna have to agree to disagree. <laughs> Injuries and hurry up offense not good. They care. That's the fun part. They do care. They do. That's like us missing Marv, right? Right. Yeah, I get you. That is like us missing Marv. I understand, but again, I don't care that much about Miami to give a damn about their DN. Travis' name, Travis J's name was brought up. Terry was supposed to interview. I heard, but I don't know what happened with that. Travis J at quarterback was brought up. I remember they were talking about Travis J at quarterback when Bryles was was there. I'll be honest with you, I don't see that happening. I. Dillingham and Norville is not going to run Travis J out there at quarterback. That doesn't make it. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense to, to play a guy that you recruited as a DB to play quarterback over. If you're going to play Travis J, you might as well start the true freshman Chubba Purdy at quarterback because Travis J has no more experience than Chubba Purdy. So that that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't. I'm not really with that Travis J thing. 
I know that was a big thing when Bryles was the was the quarter, was the offensive coordinator. Uh, Bryles liked it that a lot. I don't see Novell or Dillingham going that route because that that's that doesn't make any sense. If I'm gonna play, if I'm gonna play Travis J, I'm gonna just go ahead and throw Trevor Purdy out there from the jump because they've got the same they got the same amount of uh, experience. Literally, Travis J didn't play a lick last year. <clears throat> I think they're just making it known that the Q position is wide open and they're going to play the best guy. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. I definitely think they're going to make sure the... Like I said, they've been adamant that the that the QB position is wide open. Um, Turn say some defensive players will play offense though. They brought that up. Yeah, I think I definitely. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I definitely think you're gonna see. I think someone someone brought it up in the live stream that we did on uh, Tuesday. Like, you could see a guy like Lundy at fullback. You might. See Marv out there or Durden out there at fullback. Yeah, I definitely think you'll see stuff like that. I don't think you're going to see any, like, skill position. Like, I don't think you're going to see no DBs at, like, receiver or anything like that. That I don't believe. Uh, but you can. I think you'll see some big bodies brought in, like, to block and whatnot. Uh, but, again, I just don't. Travis J doesn't make any sense to me. Has Travis J taken one snap? He, he, he wasn't in the rotation that spring, so it doesn't make sense that all of a sudden come fall, he's in the mix. To, like, that doesn't... Maybe that's just a way to try to scare somebody, uh, put a fire under him, and get the competition rolling, but I, I just don't see that as a feasible option. I think they're just making it known that Q position is wide open. Oh, yeah, I already read that one. Travis and packages. Yeah, Travis. Uh, Jordan Travis is definitely going to be... Uh, Norvell loves to run the Wildcat. Go watch Memphis from last year. They love to run, like, Wildcat formations. That would be Jordan Travis's bread and butter for sure. Ooh, he stood me right up. You see the fullback Kerr? Yeah, he's big. I saw him. Um, Is it Amari Kerr or something like that? His, his name starts with an A, but I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, I saw his pictures. He looked like a beast. Special team's going to be lit. I hope so. We haven't had a good special teams in a while, man. So I hope so. And I try not, you know, you gotta, you gotta be careful when you look at this, again, this coach speak and all that stuff be sounding good and then the game happens. You feel me? So. I'm always going to reserve judgment. I want to see some, and I don't, I don't know how much of uh, the actual practices they'll be able to record and show us. I want to see, I want to see some, I just want to see some, uh, some practices. Not, and I don't want to see drills. I want to see like actual seven on seven types. I'd be interested to see if they do like a fall scrimmage. I think that'd be cool. Since we didn't get a spring, we didn't get the spring game this year, I'd be interested to see if they do like a, a, a fall game or something. I would love to see something like that. Just to, just to see the team in a competitive environment, right? Just to see guys hitting guys. What did he say? Papa Chu's top two coach special teams last two seasons. He's putting the fastest guys out. One DB says he's going to watch. Says he's going to watch the practices. I heard that they may want to do a scrimmage versus FAMU in the spring. I think a scrimmage versus FAMU would actually be awesome. What assuming FAMU has like the same. Uh, 
protocols and stuff, right? You, you don't want to. I don't. I don't know how that works. The pandemic changes so much. I don't. I don't know how that works because I think some of the FCS schools have already completely canceled. So I don't know how that works. But it should be easy. Family's right there across the street, so I don't think there would be really any issue, uh, or there shouldn't be any issue with that one. I mean, as long as they let them in there, as long as they let them in to see practices, that'd be cool. I want to be able to see them. Got to get my eyes on them, what I'm looking at. But other than that, I mean, I thought the interviews were, uh, all the interviews were pretty cool. Gave you a little insight on the way they're going to be coaching. Um, all that good stuff. But it's all coach talk. Because, you know, coach is gonna, coaches are going to say what they're supposed to say. But I like, again, I thought Adam Fuller's interview was, had the best insight. So he used the best terminology. I think he made it pretty clear what he wanted and didn't want, how he plans to use guys. And I thought, again, Marv is always impressive when he's in front of the camera, so... Thought Marv had a good interview as well. Yeah, I, yeah, Tyler, I agree. I think Fuller had the best interview. Everybody else to me was just talking coach talk, not really saying much, not giving much away, not really, you know. And I'm not saying Fuller gave us a bunch of what you know information, but I think he was pretty uh, clear and accurate with the way he plans the coach and his terminology so I would like to hear from Atkins so I don't know because um, in a normal circumstance right after every practice FSU usually would interview whether it be Jimbo or Willie, that'd be before or after every practice. I don't know if they're going to do it like that, obviously, this year. Or will this be a weekly thing? Um, so I'll be interested to see any like daily or weekly updates on the practices. I got to believe that practices will not be open. Practices are, 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 ra are rarely open as is. And I don't think now, I mean, usually media gets, I don't know, an hour before they get kicked out and they're not allowed to watch practice anymore. It's something like that. I don't even know if media is being invited at all. I would assume not. So we might not get any practice footage. Or maybe they'll let a guy or two to get the first 30 minutes. Before they close the practice off. But uh, Atkins is a guy I'd be interested from hearing from going forward. I would love to hear from a linebacker coach as well. Who else? I would like to hear from Tamari on Terry and his thoughts on the opting out. If he uh, has given that any thoughts. And I would, I would honestly like to hear from one of them quarterbacks. I don't think you're going to hear from one, though. 
I don't think you're going to hear from a quarterback until they decide. This defense is just getting shoved around. You talking about on the game, my defense? <laughs> Norvell looked like he didn't want to be there. LL, he has a lot on his plate. Uh, let's see. Norvell looked like he didn't want to be there. He has a lot. Of, I don't think Nor Norvell probably didn't want to be there. Um. Again, he just had a lot of coach speak going on. Um, he talked the longest, but yeah. Didn't get much out of Norvell. But I didn't expect to get much more out of Norvell because I knew majority of the questions would be directed towards the quarterbacks. And he probably was aware of that before going in. So Norvell, Dillingham, they're going to keep their things close. They're going to keep stuff close to the chest. They're not really going to get out there and tell everybody – you know. Let's see. Atkins killing recruiting. Wait till more commits come. Atkins is doing a pretty solid job. I think he's building very good relationships. Got to land some more guys. I mean, we only have two guys recruiting. I think the chemo kid is... Uh, I think he's a steal. I, something about him... His tape is, is very good to watch. I like his tape a lot. And I have a feeling that he's not done growing. I think Chemo is going to be really good. Tyler says, Chemo was a steal for us. Oh, there you go, right there. If those wingspan measurements are true, he could be a starting tackle. He moves He moves like a starting tackle. I mean, they play him in tackle in, in, in high school. Now, I know that's a whole different beast, the high school and college games. Um, but his, his movement. His movement is like the a tackle. So, yeah. I'm with you on that. If he, uh, I think he's listed at like 6'3", 280 or something. He gets a couple more inches on him. I think Kimo, Kimo is going to be nasty. Maybe get a couple more inches on him. He'll be all right. I like Estes, too. Estes and Kimo have similar uh, tape, man, if you watch them. They have similar tape. Um, if you go watch their tape, Tyler says Kimo is six five two eighty five. You think he's no? He's not six five. I think he's listed at like six three. If he was six five, I think he'd be. They wouldn't have him as an interior guard. Look that up. I know he's listed in the two eighties as far as his size. I think. I think height wise though they only list them at they only list them at like a six three or something like that. But you know, I could be wrong. Uh, they list them at six four. So yeah, you get another inch or two on them. They might uh they might throw them outside. I don't think he's underrated. My qu I, I I mean, I don't think he's really undersized. I do wonder why he's only a three-star from the tape. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe he, a, lot, a lot of times some of these kids, they, they come late to the scene on these recruiting services. A lot of times, man, it's the kids that attend all the camps that get high rankings. And sometimes you get guys who just can't afford to go to these camps. Um, that fly under the radar. And Kimo could be one of them kids. Adam A. Would it be too late to start playing football at 20 years old? At what level? At what level are you like, when you say start playing football, like... That depends, man. That depends on, like, what position you're trying to play. Because uh, there are stories of guys. There are plenty of stories of guys taking the game of football up late. But a lot of those guys were maybe, like, a tight end. 
uh, or they were like physically gifted at like defensive end, right? If you are physically gifted, you could probably play football. Football, depending on, again, depending on the, oh shit, I might lose this game. Depending on the position, I mean, you can make the transition. I, if you have the physical gifts, then yeah, I think at 20 years old, it isn't too late. Now, I would say like a position like quarterback. No, you're not going to. Probably quarterback or like. Uh, I don't know, maybe running back or something. But I think offensive line or something. You know, I don't know. It all depends on the situation we're talking. You know, I don't know. 20 years old is. Could be could actually benefit you. You haven't you haven't gone your whole teenage years getting bent, banged and beat up. You probably have more more traction left on your tires. I think he could end up around six seven range. That's most of the guys in his family. Yeah, if he's that big, man, if he gets that big, they found a gym. Marv looked angry. He is ready. I mean, if you start kicking balls or long snapping, you could start. Yeah, like a punter. Certain positions, though, I think you could be fine, too. Like, Now, here's the question is, the question is going to become at what level? Let's say you're 20 years old and you go to a D2 school. I think you could succeed and then you could even have a good NFL career because you'll take that time to learn the game. But... I don't think a 20-year-old just starting football could go to like a, a power five school because those programs aren't going to take the time, man, to, to teach you the game. Those programs are trying to win, right? But you go to a smaller school, but you're physically gifted, I think you could succeed as a 20-year-old learning football for the first time. I think it's possible. Probable? Probably not so much, but I think it's possible. Pitt might beat you, fam. That's crazy. Hey, 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 hey. We all right. We all right, man. Chill. Game just started. They're not even at halftime yet. See, my defense out here sucking, though. Juco route could be good. Yeah, I agree. Something like the Juco route could be uh Beneficial. I think it's possible. But again, you got to be physically that per that whoever that person is. You have to be physically gifted. Like you just would have to be like a LeBron James or something, where you're raw but just physically gifted enough to catch the game. The average Joe at 20 years old? No, it's not going to happen. Not at, not at an elite level. Like, not with any hopes of ever going to the NFL, I don't think. But a physically gifted specimen going to the right situation and not being rushed onto the field and actually getting somewhere where people will take the time to teach you the game, you could do something at 20 years old, man. You can do something at 20 years old. Jay Sean Corbin might be the star so far, man. Especially if you haven't been to college, go to Juco for two years, you might find yourself in a D1 school if you're really good. It's Again, yep, and depending on the position, too. If you're in a position where the learning curve isn't too steep, right? Again, to me, Tight end or something, or or deep defensive end, where you can just get to the quarterback. You know, something where you don't have to really put too much thought onto it. You could be all right. And Brady Scott gets called for holding. Glad y'all decided to kick it with me on your Thursday night. And we just got touched out. 
I'm think I'm gonna I'm gonna stream again on Saturday. Now that we got a new season, man, we got a new stuff coming out. I'm gonna make it where I stream more. All that good stuff. Thanks, Polk. I appreciate it. Why do you ask that, Adam? Just curious. Are you a 20-year-old thinking about playing football? Or, like, what's the deal? Or are you just sparking conversation? I'm curious now. Like, is that, like, a goal of yours or something? Preseason AC All-American Corbin is. Is he? He can't be. Unless he's like a second or third team All American, because ETN is gonna be first team All American for sure. I would think Miami's running back. No, that, I think he went pro. Didn't DJ Dallas go pro? I don't know. I just don't know. What did Cor Corbin haven't done anything to be a preseason All American? I know ETM would be first team All American for sure. Maybe he's a second or third team. What the hell? Oh. Saw it on Facebook. Along with Hamza. Hamza makes sense. I mean, he had 100 plus tackles last year. Marv, we know. Wilson. Wilson who? Wilson. Asante Samuel. Asante Samuel makes sense. Hamza, Marv. Wills, oh Marvin Wills, okay, 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 my bad. I know Marv, I know Hamsa, Asante makes sense. Corbin is just a bit of a surprise to me. Football is probably the best sport to pick up late. Some something like basketball, baseball, right? Especially, especially baseball. Basketball, those games were a little bit more of a. Uh, uh, skill, right? Basketball, you gotta learn how to shoot. Unless you're seven foot tall. You can take basketball up late. But basketball, that's a game you need to learn how to shoot, hand-eye coordination, all that good stuff, right? Again, depending on the sport, I think football, you're okay. Don't throw a pick. He threw a pick. Football's probably, okay. He was on his way, but he got hurt at Texas. Damn, bro, rip off. Rip off fam, FSU still got though. Don't know what you mean right there, Frank. Corbin and Terry, too, preseason all ACC. Terry should be. 
I forgot about Terry. Let's see. Yeah, this defense just can't make tackles. Getting shut in this defense. Man, I don't know what's going on defensively. I don't remember if I who got the ball first. I think we did. Come on. ACC. Both teams are playing good right now. How's Pitt keeping up with you? Because I can't stop them. See that? Look. Look at this. Are they breaking a million tackles? That's how they're... I can't stop them. So, F so ACC's first team... All conference offense is Trevor Lawrence, ETN. The other running back is JV and Hawkins out of Louisville. Wide, re wide receiver is Sage Surratt out of Wake Forest, Tamari on Terry. Tight end, Bev Brevin Jordan. Center is uh, the Pitt center, Jimmy Morrissey. Clemson offensive lineman, Virginia Tech offensive lineman. Don't care about none of that. Okay. And the first team defense was Russo, Carlos Basham, Jalen Taiwan, Marvin Wilson, linebackers, and Asante Samuel made first team, and Hanson Nazardine made the first team, all ACC. Second team, David Bailey, Michael Carter. Florida State doesn't have one player on the – they don't even have one player on the ACC second team, which I think Corey Durden probably should have been on the ACC second team. I think that's a bit of a snub right there. So Jay Sean Corbin made the third team. Jay Sean Corbin made all ACC third team. Hell, Corey Durden didn't even make the ACC third team. Dante Luke, they have a fourth team. Dante Luke has made all ACC fourth team. Dirt made the fourth team. So, yeah. Jason Corbin made the third team all ACC. Kickoff return, fam, need it. Both teams are playing good. All right, we got to play some defense, man. What we got? Polk ain't even playing. I'm really not. I'm on. I'm looking at stuff that we talking about. We talking about all ACC and stuff. I'm halfway into the game. They keep beating me on these out routes though. Like why can't we cover the out route? Look at it. Let me get in the game before I end up losing the first game. Always break the first tackle. You can get in here, man. Hey, 
And then as soon as we get it tackled, it's a face mask. Dial up. Let me find out Pitt putting them paws on you. Man, I'm trying. I'm trying not to get embarrassed. As soon as I make a tackle, it's a face mask. So you can already see how this game going. The ACC refs are at us again. The Kenny Pickett is killing us. Can't get a sack. All right, we're going to go. I'm staying out the zone because they are killing the zone. Shoot. All right. We blitz the safety. We do a safety blitz. Not too comfortable on it, to be honest with you. Let's go. Oh, it worked. Who's that? That's Jerry and Jones? Jerry and Jones with the blitz, baby. Good stop. They playing like that nothing to lose. Let's go. That's an Adam Fuller defense, boy. Drew up that blitz. Let's get this offense rolling, man. This offense ain't really been doing too much. You should update the numbers. So, on this, you can't pick number zero. I know Corbin is number zero. And, unfortunately, like, you know in real life, a defensive player can have one number and an offensive player can have the same number. You can't do that on this game. Once you give a guy a number, he just has, I can't give another guy, even if it's a defensive player, the same number. Yeah, I had Gainer. Yep, I had Gainer eat up one of the blocks, and the safety was able to run right through there. It wasn't me, though. That was uh, Adam Fuller. Adam Fuller drew that blitz up, so give credit where it's due. Dial up. What an offensive line. That, that pocket just collapsed, didn't it? Jesus. All right, we'll go five wide. Whoa, we almost jumped that. Man, that sack hurt. <sighs> that sack hurt us. Look at that. I don't. Offensive line. Amir, Amir Watts killing. Who's. Who's getting worked? That's Love Taylor. I think I just got to stick to the running game, man. Dialup says you can, but you have to do it through the Team Builder website. Oh, uh, okay. See, I didn't know that. We got to get a turnover. We need a turnover. We need a turnover.
Look, look at that. Why do you break that? You see what I'm saying? I can't get a tackle. Look at this. Santi, read the play. Still couldn't get a tackle. Come on. Hey. Right now, people can see you. Yeah, people can see you. Where? On the computer, fool. <laughs> yeah, that old line's terrible. Definitely got to do the red game. Short passes. Okay. You're not, the, you. you're not the star of this show, are you? <laughs> I got my nose done. Bye. Bye. Close the door. All right. Let's get this run game going. Because offensive line don't even hold up long enough for the routes to develop. But see, they can run block, though. Corbin's pretty solid. Corbin's pretty solid. Yeah, 11 yard. Yeah, we got 11 rushes for 66 yards. We got to get him the ball more. Purdy's quite not. He's not quite ready to to take take the reins and lead this team. Oh, he read the screen. <laughs> the screen plays don't work. I go quick slant. They are locking me up. Right there. Warren Thompson. All right. Warren got the first. I'll try the quick screen here. Oh, thought I got Rondo. Okay, cool. Eight yards. Good, good gain on first down. I know how you feel, man. Sometimes that O line is not doing good. I played in TWA thirteen. Yeah, Jay Sean gonna be the star of this game. We about to get him some numbers. Because right now he has been the most effective player I have. Look at that. They are doing a good job run blocking. It's just when you try to pass the ball. You try to pass the ball, man. Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. We need a score. Time they blitzed it. All right. I kind of want to. We just gonna have to, we might have to go for it on that fourth down. Never mind. We got first. I had a feeling that play was gonna work. Been dropped it. Come on. Second 
They ain't making it easy, man. They are not making this thing easy. You're dropping passes. Blitzed it. They blitzed the damn. It's like they know I'm running the ball now, so they start blitzing every time I run the ball. Keyshawn got behind the safety, and that's all you need, baby. Let's go. Now we just got to play some defense. I need an interception. I'm smelling the interception right now. They might try to run the ball, though. That's exactly what they did. Ran the ball. Good thing about Pitt is they don't run the no huddle. Good job by Kane, though. All right, let's go. Three now. Let's get it. Come on. That's right, Abel. I'm about to play some defense. Ooh, I don't want to call that one. I don't, I don't like it. Ooh. Oh, I didn't get a chance to pick my play because I couldn't figure out what I want to call. What are we playing? Okay, they're just manning up. I'm going to cover the inside guy. Oh, they call the screen. Gator. Mm. They called a screen. So it's a good thing we didn't blitz. Now that run defense getting their stuff in it, you're due for a turnover. I think so, man. I think I'm due for one, too. But they don't want to pass the ball. You see what they're doing? Running and calling screen plays. It's probably going to be a run right here. No? They're finally going for a pass. But look, short pass. That's all they're doing. Short passing game and running the ball. They're trying to run the clock out. They think they're going to dink and dunk their way. To a field goal or something. Right here. I need to get this. Fourth and 13. I need to get them off the field. I need to get them off the field. I'll take that. Let's go. Turn say good stop. Yeah, man. Let's get this ball in Ren hand and see what we can get. Corey Ren in the building. Oh. All we got to do is work the clock now. No turnovers. 
Jay Sean Corbin running that thing. Let's get him over a hundred. Let's let's crank Jay Sean Corbin down uh, over a hundred yards. Turn say perfect time for the blitz. Cheat up the blitzers. LOL. Do that every time you get the shutout. <laughs> I try not to blitz every time. For one, I don't want to do any like cheese plays. I try to you know, call legit defense, call a legit offense for the most part. Whereas, like you know, if you, if I wanted to, you could call the cheese plays every time and, and score sixty on them. I just try to play in the flow of the game, keep it interesting. Uh, I don't like none of these random plays they give me. Put Terry on the uh, on the sweep. Ah, it didn't work. Blocking wasn't good enough. But we forced Pitt to use all their timeouts. Uh, I don't know. I probably shouldn't throw the ball right here. Damn bounce. You didn't. Damn. They play the deep zone, so that was the only option I even had on that play. We'll get the first here, then we'll worry about that safety's creeping up. Let's get the first. There we go. Now we'll, bam. Now we'll run the clock, win this game. Pitt, put, Pitt played a tough game right here, man. Pitt played a tough game tonight. I thought he went after the runner. He stumbled into that tackle. Get the hell out of here. Jay Sean got 100 yet? I made more than it. Oh, there we go. Jay Sean, 100 yards. Keyshawn Hilton was the wide receiver of the game. But Jay Sean Corbin was the player of the game. Man, that was a fake. All right, so we ain't going to call it a face mask. Cool, cool. Just for that, I'm going to score on y'all now. Corbin going to put up at least 700 yards for us if he stays healthy. I think so. I think that's a good number, Tyler. Between him and Webb. I think that's a solid number. Miami YouTubers got beefing. Who got beef, Turn? Check out Zoe's channel. They beefing with each other. What they talking <laughs> What they talking about? What they talking about? They mad? Is this about Rousseau or what are they just mad? They, they, I don't see what they beefing for. They be on the recruiting trail. Go ahead and get this last touchdown. You say you think Webb gonna get around four hundred? I think. I think I think Webb is going to be now this is just my prediction on Webb. I think Webb is gonna have like over a thousand total purpose yards. I think that's rushing and, and, and receiving. I think Webb's gonna have over a thousand total purpose yards. That's just me. I think that's how they're gonna utilize him. Hey. 
if not web one of the backs but somebody's gonna they're gonna have somebody split out in the back and I think web might be the guy or it could be one of those true freshmen like a Douglas but I think uh I think web over a thousand total purpose yards Paul the scoop stole T2Y's clothing deal he was trying to get. It was T2Y's idea. So let me get it straight. T2Y had a clothing idea and another channel stole his idea. Give me that. Should have been a pick. Another channel stole his idea. Are they getting paid for it or just like, what's the deal? That's why sometimes, man, when you got a good idea, sometimes it's good to just keep that junk to yourself because you don't know who you can really trust out here, man. People that take your ideas and claim it as their own. You never know. But we pulled out the victory in a tough game with Pitt. Turn say something like that. Yeah. That sucks. I don't even know who Paul the Scoop is. Who is Paul the Scoop? I'm going to look him up. So why is Zoe in the middle of something that has to do with T2Y and Paul the Scoop? Like, that doesn't... Or it was like Zoe playing moderator or some junk. Yeah, he was trying to get some clo some clothes deals, and Paul stepped in and right, stay quiet. Zoe was pissed. Money's involved. Zo is Zoe pissed at Paul, or is Zoe just like Zoe might have had some? Uh, I don't know. I'm wearing an FSU jersey. I did not watch this. If FSU was gonna lose, bro, we good. Frank, I got the dub. That's all that matters. Look at that. 28-20, baby. We pulled it out. Over two, over, I mean, the offensive numbers aren't great. But we pulled it out. Keyshawn Helton had a good game. Jerry and Jones had a good game. We pulled it out, Frank, bro. That's all that matters. No, we're not doing that. Paul, the scoop, I guess is what it is, or something like that. Okay, so that's a Miami channel. Okay. Let me see what Zoe's talking about. Y'all hear this? Let's see this. He, I, I never question his ability on or off the field. Next game is Boise, by the way. And he tried to steal that young man's. He tried to steal that young man's. Um, he tried to steal Harris' recruiting day, and Harris' parents was pissed. Let me leave that alone. We ain't gonna talk about what he did last Saturday, but you can go over there and he can have a hundred people in his chat talking about really absolutely nothing except for what he read. Or do do nothing for the University of Miami. Does nothing for the kids. Absolutely nothing. This is a diehard. I am a fucking diehard Hurricane fan. T two Y. Y'all hear this? So, thank y'all for tuning in tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to that a little later. Turn. Uh, I'll be doing a little live stream soon, but we just beat Pitt, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. It's your boy, Polk County Noel. We got Boise State next.
And I'm out, y'all. Stay classy, Seminoles. Y'all can hear him in the background. <laughs> Have you, uh...